Hi guys, we're back with another session, Sessions 22. In our last session, which was Session 21, we focused on medication administration. Now today in 22, we're going to discuss medication errors, the five rights again, how to avoid using the wrong route, when two patients have the same name, how to rethink your decision to administer medication and potassium administration. So let's get started. Here we have the five rights which we discussed in the last session, 21. Right patient, right drug, right route, right do, uh, dose, right time. Always check your five rights to make sure that you're on the right page when administering medications to patients. Now here's Sarah. Sarah is about to make a medication error. Why? Because she is new and she does not want to look stupid. She is going to administer potassium, IM, which is intramuscularly instead of IV. Now potassium is never given into the muscle. It's a very lethal drug that has to be diluted and it's usually given very slowly either in an IV piggyback form or it's usually added to an IV infusion. Again, the doctor decides how fast he wants to read, but you never take potassium and just push into the muscle. The consequences can be fatal. Let's talk a little about oral potassium also. It can be very irritating to the stomach. So if you have oral potassium ordered for a patient, find out from the pharmacy if it's the kind of solution that you can give without further diluting or adding something else to coat the stomach because I have heard patients complain of tremendous pain in the stomach after taking potassium on an empty stomach. Now how, here are some helpful hints about how you can avoid the sort of situation that Sarah is in. Never assume if you are uncertain and it's okay to look stupid sometimes for the sake of someone's life. If you are not sure what you should do, you can talk to someone who's more experienced than yourself. Consult with the pharmacist, your institutions, policies and procedures. And remember, there are situations where you can go online in your ph within the hospital itself looking up to see what the pharmacy allows and of course if all else fails you ask the pharmacy how this, should this be diluted but never take it upon yourself to administer potassium just because it feels like the right thing to do. Now here's another situation Sally had surgery for a brain tumor and I have to caution you that patients who have brain surgery wind up with terrible headaches after having no rest and lots of visitors here is a patient who had brain surgery. She's all set here with her mustache dressing. She's had visitors for a very long time, several hours. Now she's complaining of what? A severe headache. Her nurse gets her a pain shot. But here's the problem. The nurse did not take into account that there were two patients with the same name. How can you avoid giving medication to the wrong patient in that situation. Well, here are some here helpful pointers. If you have two people with the same name, you should red flag the MAR, which is the medication administration record. And if not a red flag, just put a note in bright red to caution anyone coming to that MAR that that patient has the same name as another patient. When you administer medications, you should do everything you possibly can to avoid making a mistake. Let's move on to Tim, a very dependable nurse. He usually follows the five rights of medication. Today, however, Tim's dependability has been tested. Tim had everything set to go correctly, but before he could give the insulin injection, he was called to the phone. And this does happen on occasion. Guess what? Tim received bad news. Now, do I have to tell you that if you had bad news, your mind would be someplace else? Think of if you were in his position, what would happen? Your mind would be churning away, thinking of all the different things that you could do in that situation. Now, what follows next? Tim picks up the insulin injection and proceeds to wear the wrong patient. Guess what happens? Now, it's 7.30 in the morning, and Tom has given regular insulin to this patient who has no previous history of diabetes. 30 minutes later, because regular insulin is very quick acting, 
Tom start, this patient starts to complain of feeling weak and shaky. Naturally, the insulin has kicked in, and there is no food on the table, so this patient is reacting. Furthermore, she's not a diabetic. So she calls her nurse. She said, what was that shot that you gave me? Well, how do you avoid this happening? You always pay attention to what is most important. If you were in Tom's situation and you got bad news, how could you avoid it happening? Well, here are some helpful pointers. My suggestion is if you're confused, discard the medication, start all over again. Go back with the five rights. Right patient, I don't have to tell you, right order, right route, right time, you know the five rights. Go ahead and start all over again. Because remember, your decision will be life-saving. Even if it seems tedious to have to start all over again, it's perfectly okay to start all over again for what it's worth. Please avoid making medication errors. If you don't keep your head in the right direction, it can happen. Busy talking, busy having conversation with friends, doing too many things at one time, people calling you in another direction. Sometimes you may have distraction, like a visitor comes in, distracts you. You get confused. I've known someone to have that happen patient called her on the way to administering medication. She took care of that patient's needs, forgot that she was going to give the medication to somebody else and wound up giving it to that patient. She almost got herself into a really critical situation, but thank God she got out of it. The patient survived the ordeal. So always make sure you do not go down that road. You do everything to avoid going down that road. And of course, I want you to stay posted in the future for more clinical issues. Hope you've learned something from this. You can never be overcautious. Have a nice week.